Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Burf. And I'm back again, baby, with another epic thrift store vintage toy hunt adventure. And uh, so happy that you get to tag along with me in this episode because I found some cool stuff. I actually found an action figure that goes to a play set that I found at Thrift Giant about two and a half years ago, which was an awesome play set. I'm talking like Castle Grayskull type awesome. So uh, when I show you the figure today, we're gonna do a little show and tell and I'll make sure I bust out that play set and the other figures I have along with it. So we're gonna do that. And also I found a figure, a huge figure, like an 18 inch tall figure, maybe even 20 inches that I already have, and I should have probably picked up just, you know, to have two of them because I'm all about having doubles of things, right? But uh, but I did, I passed on it, I passed on it. But looking back on the video clips as I was editing this video, I was like, man, I should have probably gone that thing. So, but anyway, I have a great episode in store for you guys tonight. We're gonna keep our fingers crossed and we're gonna pray, 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 pray that those vintage thrift store gods are good to me today. My name is Burf and this is my turf. I'm straight out of the thrift store. These were the Mickey D's Beanie Babies. Fozzie. I don't know who that frog. Oh, that's from that Ryan's World. Let's see what we got here. It's a Spider Man. Oh, it's the same as that uh, Superman that was in that bag earlier. And there's an R2D2. Yosemite Sam. Hey, it's a Mario. And there's a Ryan's World kid again. Look at these. Check out that uh, Power Ranger. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Say Disney? It says Disney on the back. But Disney owns the Power Rangers. I didn't know that. And what's this? Looks like we got some some dolls. Yeah. Just not really seeing anything. Maybe some die cast, Thomas the Train. Hey, look at this vintage Ernie. Oh, he's like a pull string. Does he talk? Hmm. All right, so we got the string pulled. Let's see what he does. Would you like to watch Sesame Street? Hmm. Well, I did look him up on eBay. He's selling for about 10 bucks. So they've got him priced at eight, so. It's about the same as eBay prices. Hey, looky here, we got a Clifford, the big red dog. He looks like he might be an older one, maybe. Yeah, hey, look at this tag. Does it have a year on it? Let's see. Uh, 2000. Yeah, so he's like almost 25 years old. 23 years old. Oh, look at this little pirate ship. Is that like a Mario? I think it might be like a Mario ship. Oh yeah, there's Bowser on the back. And maybe some sort of Pokemon toy. Okay, so at first I thought he was from 2001 because I saw some ones on eBay that sold for like 80 bucks and they were from 2001 and they looked just like this one. But then I noticed a slight discrepancy in the color of the legs. So I looked him looked a little further and on the tail here it says he was made in 2022 so i saw where he's selling for about 10 to 15 dollars pam will probably give them to me for a dollar the lady that uh works here maybe she owns the shop i'm not exactly sure but i might pick them up for a dollar just to flip them for maybe 15 bucks or something like that I'll think about it. So not a whole lot going on at Support Your Troops today, but that's okay because we still have a few more thrift stores to hit up. I think the next place we're gonna go to is Craptastic Sam's, AKA Plaza Thrift. 
So my wife calls it craptastic stamps because she says all I ever pull out of there is crap. But you know, if she, if she was gonna if she was gonna name it based on me pulling crap out of someplace, uh, every store I go to would be called crappy Sam's. So anyway, let's head that way and see what kind of goodies they got. Mm. Oh, nothing in here. All right, let's see if we can find anything on the shelf. There's a TMNT water bottle. That's kind of cool. But is there any vintage toys for us today? What do we got in here? What's this thing? Oh, nothing. <laughs> oh, look at this vehicle. How about over here in Baggy Land? Emo. This dog looks familiar for some reason. Oh, look at this uh, Boopsy Cola. It's a tin. That's awesome. Oh, we've got some. Uh, look at this Betty Boop. Got some more Boop in here. Some letters. Too bad these didn't spell birth. Like the Spider Man. Well, let's see what we have here. Got a dino, some sort of Superman. Oh, we got a Batman. Oh, I actually need him. So there's this whole line where they made the DC figures uh, in like a He-Man style body, a Masters of the Universe style body. And I've got the Castle Play set, I've got the Joker, I've got some, uh, I've got Mr. Freeze, but I don't have the Batman. Let me look for this. Oh, 292? Yeah, that's worth three bucks. I'm gonna grab that. Oh, what do we got here? Looks like we got a little Rudolph toy in there. Oh, and a Santa. That's kind of cool. Looks like he's got a little speaker there in the back of his head. So three bucks for that. I might grab that for three bucks. I like those little figures. Hot diggity dog. I've been eating this Batman. So I am so happy that I found it. I was, I was going to buy him on eBay a little while back, but I think they wanted like 20 bucks for him or something like that. And I just didn't want to spend the money at the time. So I'm glad I was able to pick him up for a few bucks. Let's do some epic show and tell. In 2018, the world witnessed the birth of a unique fusion between pop culture icons as DC Comics and Funko joined forces to create the primal age Batman toy line. Inspired by the classic 1980s action figures, this innovative series transported the beloved characters into a barbaric sword and sorcery universe. The primal age Batman toy line became an instant hit among collectors and enthusiasts, but its origins are rooted in the nostalgia of a bygone era. The 1980s were a golden era for action figures. Icons like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe and Thundercats ruled the shelves, capturing the imaginations of children worldwide. It was in this vibrant atmosphere that the concept of primal age Batman took shape. Funko aimed to revive the essence of these classic figures, channeling the spirit of adventure and heroism that defined that era's toys. In a groundbreaking collaboration, DC Comics and Funko reimagined Batman and other DC characters as primal warriors. Gone were the high-tech gadgets and sleek costumes replaced by medieval weapons and rugged, fantasy-inspired attire. This imaginative fusion of superheroes and sword and sorcery aesthetics struck a chord with fans, allowing them to see their favorite characters in an entirely new light. The Primal Age Batman toy line catered not only to the nostalgia of longtime fans, but also to the collector's market. Funko released a series of limited edition figures, each meticulously designed and packaged to appeal to serious collectors. These rare editions featured variant characters, unique paint jobs, and elaborate packaging, making them highly sought after in the collector community. 
As the primal age Batman toy line gained in popularity, Funko and DC Comics expanded the universe, introducing new characters and storylines. Iconic DC villains were reimagined as barbaric adversaries, engaging in epic battles with the primal heroes. This expansion added depth to the toy line, creating a rich narrative tapestry that further captivated fans and collectors alike. In the realm of action figure playsets, the Primal Age Batman Batcave stands as a crowning achievement, capturing the essence of adventure in a prehistoric world. Launched as part of the Primal Age Batman toy line, this playset was a game changer for collectors and fans alike. Released in the wake of the toy line's initial success, the Batcave playset became the ultimate battleground for the primal version of DC Comics' legendary characters. The playset was meticulously designed featuring intricate details reminiscent of a mythical cavern. From stalactites hanging from the ceilings to hidden traps and secret compartments, every element was crafted to enhance the immersive experience, offering children and collectors alike an opportunity to step into the primal world of their favorite superheroes. What set this Primal Age Batman Batcave playset apart was its attention to detail and the endless possibilities it offered for imaginative play. The playset included various interactive features such as a jail cell for capturing villains and even a throne for the Primal Age Batman himself. These features not only encouraged creative storytelling but also allowed collectors to showcase their figures in dynamic and exciting ways. With the playset serving as a central hub, collectors could recreate epic battles, devise elaborate rescue missions, and invent entirely new storylines, making it a cornerstone of the Primal Age Batman toy line success. As a testament to its popularity, the Batcave playset remains a cherished item among collectors, representing a pivotal moment in the history of action figure accessories. The Primal Age Batman toy line's legacy extends beyond the figures themselves. It became a symbol of creativity and innovation, showcasing the endless possibilities of blending different genres and universes. By tapping into the collective nostalgia of the 1980s, Funko and DC Comics created not just toys, but tangible pieces of art that resonate with all generations. As collectors proudly display these figures in their homes, the Primal Age Batman toy line stands as a testament to the timeless appeal of classic action figures and the boundless imagination of those who create them. How freaking awesome is that playset? That thing is absolutely fantastic. I found the Bat Castle. I found it at Thrift Giant like two and a half years ago. It was $5. And I ended up buying the accessories for it on eBay, which cost me like another 30 bucks or something like that. So I got $35 into that thing. And oh my gosh, like I absolutely love it. Like it looks just so awesome. Such a great playset. definitely underrated in my opinion. Um, man, I, I just can't say enough good things about it. So, all right, guys, we got some more thrift stores to hit up. Up next, let's go hit up St. Vinny de Paul. Check out this colorful Noah's Ark. This thing is awesome. I'm not gonna get it, but it's really cool. Very, very vibrant. Oh, look at this uh, Coca-Cola polar bear mug. I was looking to see if there was a year on it. Made in Canada. Oh, we got a little TMNT puzzle. Look at Granny's hot dice is still here. We saw this like a week or so ago. Hey, it's one of those, uh, I think they're called, they're called Scritters. I think I have a couple of these on card at the house somewhere. Bags full of Mickey D's toys. Nothing significant. We got a chicken. Those things are so loud. Nutty nuts. What's in here? Oh, just like little puzzle pieces, I guess. Oh, look at this. AirTech Stealth Radio Controlled Airplane. Wow, really? This box looks old. This 
this looks like it's an oh it's like uh i see it's made out of foam that is pretty sweet got this big old remote control what's this thing is this, is this maybe the battery that charges it whoops <laughs> It's gotta be maybe the battery. Dang. So the other day I was at St. Vinny de Paul and I found a ghost one of these from 1990. It's made by the Mars Candy Company. And uh, this is the, this goes to the same line. So there was a ghost and then there's this like, I guess maybe dragon or troll. I don't know what this is supposed to be, but the sticker right here would be of like a Snicker bar or some sort of Mars product. I'm gonna go ahead and get it. They want 69 cents for it. And uh, I mean, if I've got the ghosts, I gotta get this too, right? Plus I love the vibrant green color of it. All right, well, we pulled a little something something out of St. Vinny's, so let's do a little show and tell. Well, here they are, the 1990 Mars Inc. candy jars. So I picked the green one up at St. Vinny's today. And this one over here, I picked up at St. Vinny de Paul's, another St. Vinny's uh, over in Dallas, like, I don't know, maybe a week or so ago. So I've got both now. So still need to get Nicole to maybe paint some eyes on him or maybe I can find some stickers of eyeballs, like maybe go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something like that. But I think they're pretty cool. I got to clean this up a little bit. Maybe I can find a sticker of like a Mars bar or something like that just to, uh, you know, kind of make it fresh and new. All right, gang, up next, we hit up the thrift store. Let's see, what do we got here? We got some Pokemon. I wonder if these guys are worth anything. They're asking 10 bucks for them. I'm gonna look into it. Oh, there's also like some games here too. And some sort of Jurassic figure. Come on, check out that uh, National Geographic moon landing set. And it's an interesting looking gun. Oh, there's some interesting things here today. Now what's this thing? I don't know what that is or what that belongs to. I mean, I know it's a car, but it's, I don't know what it goes to. Oh, I got a little greedy smurf in there. Yoshi. Oh, look at this big guy. What are they asking for him? 15 bucks. I've got him already, but I see that he sells for like $30. Dang. Now looky, looky. It's our boy Buzz. And right next to him, we've got our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And we've got a Captain America with paint wear on his nose, as usual. We've got a Batman. And we've got this Superman. I've had him before. Him and uh, there was a Batman that had wings like this, too. I don't know why Superman needs wings, though. Why does he need wings? Oh, we got this little TMNT party wagon. It's almost like it kind of looks like a Fisher-Price version or something like that. It's from 2014. Look at this tractor. These big monster truck tires on it. What's this? I think that's I think that's Maleficent. I got this big old snake head in here. Some dinos, lizards. Oh, what's this thing? Looks like a little action figure. Looks like some sort of playset or something. I've never seen that before. What do they want for that? Five bucks. Here's some more action figures in here. That looks like it. Is that like a Fortnite guy, maybe? Maybe a couple of them. Hey, it's Chuck Brown bag full of Mickey D's toys, some MLP stuff. I'll check that out. You could probably use that as timber for snake eyes, G.I. Joe. And 
what we got in this bag. Uh, not a whole lot. Some walkie-talkies. Transformer stuff. Look, it's Gus Gus. We got a Batman in here. I don't know what this figure is. This looks like older plastic though. Could be a vintage figure sitting in there or something. There's his head. What do we got here? Oh, we got a TMNT. I think that's one of those mutant types. Not, the, you know, I mean, I know they're Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but, you know, where they turn into an actual turtle. Oh, look at this bag of dinos. I see these all the time. Just like one here, one there. I've never seen them all together. I wonder if this is like the playset that goes with them. Kong, that Kong man. I should have, I should have probably got the Kong. He's like, he was like, what, fifteen dollars? I think he reselled. I know I bought mine personally. I bought mine for like thirty bucks, but I've seen him sell for like forty. So uh, yeah, I really didn't have a use for him, but he's just so freaking cool that part of me is just like, I should have gotten him. Uh, I'll, I'll show you my Kong. Here he is in all his glory, baby. I actually bought this Kong at the very first toy show I ever went to, like the first toy show ever in my life. It was over at the Music City Mall here in uh, Dallas, over in Louisville. And I bought it from my friend Chuck, who was not a friend of mine at the time. He was just a vendor and he has since become a friend. So uh, I bought him for $30 and uh, I just love it, man. It's just so massive and he looks so good in this diorama. I found this Kong about a month ago at Goodwill. And you can see, you know, I've got a lot of my core action figures and stuff like that all set up there. They're trying to take down the mighty beast. But yeah, that is my Kong. All right, gang, I think it's time for us to go hit up another crappy Sam's, another Plaza Thrift. Yes, there are two of them. One in Plano and one in McKinney. Let's head that way and see what kind of goodies they got. All right, let's see, what do we got? Lots of Lego bags today. Uh, there's a GI Joe right there. I had that one before. Some TMNT. We'll go check the shelves. All right, let's see, what do we got? What's this, like some sort of motor? Amphibico, I have no idea what that is. Looks like it might be some sort of camera or something. What else do we got? Any other goodies? Anything calling out to us? This little horse. Got some Mickey D's toys. What's this? Fix it, Felix Jr. A buck 49 for that. A good price normally you see these things at like seven eight dollars all right how about baggy land we got anything good in baggy land these bags look kind of wiped out tacos let's see yeah i'm not really seeing anything oh look at this Halloween tombstone. That thing is heavy. Holy cow. That's pretty neat. Got a couple of these little skeleton plush. All right, what do we got here? Lisa, Max, Nico. Liza, Max, and Nico. Mighty Express, never heard of it. Well, there wasn't a whole lot going on there. Crappy Sam's now, was there? So. Uh, we walked out of there with a big fat bus, but we've got one more store to hit up and it's a Goody Wheel, baby. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's a Goody Wheel. You know what I'm talking about, my Goody Wheel gang. My Goody Wheel gang knows what I'm talking about. It's time to rise up, Goody Wheel gang. Hashtag Goody Wheel gang gang in the comments below and join me in this anthem. What you got for me today, Goody Wheel? What you got for me today? Look at this giant bag. Oh, check it out. It's our boy Buzz. Oh, there's a Godzilla in there. Let's get this thing down and take a better look. Okay, we got a camel. Something in there with pinchers. I don't know what that is. 
got some golden dinosaurs over here. Those are different. Looks like they have like screws screwed into them. There's the, There's the Godzilla. I'm not paying 15 bucks for the bag though, just to get that. Sanders? Yeah, I think that's Bernie Sanders. Uh, here's the thing from uh, Stranger Things. I mean, there's a few cool things in here. I just don't know if it's worth spending 16 bucks on to get all this other junk. Chances are, guys, I'm going to end up leaving it behind. Yeah, somebody did drive screws into them. I wonder what the purpose of that was. I'm kind of intrigued. Whoa, I was going to say I'm kind of intrigued by this, but $3.99 for your VHS? Oh my God, that is ridiculous. But I was kind of intrigued by, you know, the Ark of the Covenant. Of course, it's going to be outdated because this was printed in 1994. Yeah, I'm not buying that for $4. That's ridiculous. What a load of horse shill. I've been noticing that Goodwill has been increasing the prices on their VHS. Uh, there is uh, there is a Betty Boop and Felix the Cat I saw at another store, another Goodwill, like last week sometime. And they wanted $5 for the VHS. $5! And there was no way I'm paying $4 for that Ark of the Covenant. That's highway robbery, I'm telling you. But hey, you know what? We didn't finish strong, but we still had fun. And if you did have fun, do me a favor, smash the like button. That helps me out. It helps my channel grow. And if you want to see more great content just like this, check out this next video.